look, we're not going to fall for the banana in the tailpipe. You're not going to fall for the banana in the tailpipe? <laughs> All right, y'all, I got the privilege today to talk about one of my favorite movies, Beverly Hills Cop. I'm being joined by Anthony A. Perez. We're doing our Tit for Tat series where we pick movies out for each other that we normally would not watch. So last time, let's see, I had to watch Halloween Town. So I'm going to put that link in the description to Anthony A. Perez's channel. I had to watch Halloween Town and review that with him. So today, we're talking Beverly Hills Cop. I'm going to be joined by him in a minute. We're going to get his thoughts on the movie. And by the way... If you haven't yet, subscribe to his channel, Anthony A. Perez. He talks about movies like myself. He gets down to that shit, cuts all the way down to the bone marrow and, and the and the gristle and all that shit, and gets down to the nitty-gritty of these movies. I love the way he breaks films down, man. So after you watch this video, check him out, Anthony A. Perez. Beverly Hills Cop dropped in 1984, and if I'm not mistaken, it was the top grossing movie of that year. It was between that and Ghostbusters. I should have did more research before I did this video, but I believe it was the top grossing movie of that year. If I'm wrong, forgive me. I know you're going to call me out in the comments, but I think it was a top gross movie that year. This film made Eddie Murphy a bona fide star. Now, back then, now take it back. Okay, now let's take it back to before anybody knew who Eddie Murphy was. He was the black guy on Saturday Night Live. Okay, he played Gumby and James Brown and all that shit, the hot tub. And then he got his, uh, his feature film debut in 48 Hours opposite Nick Nolte. But Nick Nolte was the headliner. Eddie Murphy was the comic relief. But he stole the fucking movie. Then he did Trading Places, which was a breakout role for him. Trading Places was a big hit, but it was this film right here. This film catapulted that motherfucker into the stratosphere. Boom! Out! Beverly Hills Cop is a simple story of Detective Axel Foley, who was a wisecracking, jive-talking uh, cop. But I did a video about this talking about Kincaid from Nightmare on Elm Street 3, how Kincaid represented... How black people represented in the movies, you know, the jive talking, the rhyming, you know. But the difference with Eddie is that unlike Kincaid and a lot of other black people that was in movies at the time in the 80s, Eddie was always the smartest person in the room. So yeah, he talked his shit, he talked his jive, but in every scene he was in, he was always the smartest person in the room. Like, Eddie was the star. And Perez is going to say this in a little bit where he said, you know, he didn't remember any other characters in the movie besides Axel Foley. And that's because Eddie's a fucking man, you know, because there were some memorable, memorable characters, you know, Victor Maitland, who was the villain. I thought he was a good villain. You know, you got a, a Rosewood and Taggart, who was his partners. You know, the, the one black dude, you know, there's no, there's a banana in the tailpipe, that guy. And uh, Damon Wayans even has a, a cameo in there. If you blink, you'll miss it. He's the guy that gives the bananas. So, uh, yeah, th th there were some memorable characters in here, but because Eddie was so on top of his game, man... You know what I'm saying? He just he just outshined everybody. So, yeah, Detective Axel Foley is a Detroit cop, and his friend Michael Tandino gets murdered on some bullshit. You know, he's involved with the wrong people. So now Axel has to get revenge on the motherfuckers that killed his friend. So he has to go out to Beverly Hills, where Mikey worked for uh, uh, Victor Maitland, and he hooks up with another old friend, Jenny Summers, which Eddie should have hooked up with, I mean, because Jenny Summers was fine, you know what I'm saying? But, you know... Hey, yeah, look, even though Eddie was the guy, but at the time, Hollywood wasn't ready for that, that jungle fever shit, you know what I'm saying? Back then, you didn't see too many brothers getting white girls on screen, that just didn't happen, okay? Let's, let's, let's be real, if Sly Stallone did this movie, Sly Stallone, he would've fucked Jenny Summers, okay? Sly would've fucked Jenny Summers, but because it's Eddie, they couldn't have that, that, that black dick in Jenny Summers, that's just what it is. Speaking of Sly Stallone, a little trivia for you, for those that don't know, but I mean, I know a lot of y'all watch YouTube and you've seen all the behind the scenes shit, so many of you may already know that Sly Stallone was the original choice for Beverly Hills Cop, but he wanted it more darker, he wanted it more violent, and the studios was like, nah, we want to make something a little bit more lighthearted, a little bit more comedic, they clashed, so Sly stepped off and did Cobra instead, so Beverly Hills Cop was really supposed to be Cobra. Yeah, play that in your head. <laughs> so before I get into the rest of my thoughts on Beverly Hills Cop, because I know I'm going to ramble on about this movie, so I want to give the floor to Anthony A. Perez to hear what he thinks about it. So Perez, the floor is yours, homie. What you got? Rashad and all of his viewers. 
once again, my friend, thank you so much for having me in another video for our Tip for Tat series. And this time, you wanted me to check out Beverly Hills Cop, a film that I've seen tons and tons of times. So it was nice to go back and revisit it because I probably haven't seen it in at least about 10 years or so. But this is one of those movies that I just felt was on TV all the time or I just saw at people's houses all the time growing up. It was just one of those movies that was always on. And whether it was just certain lines from the movie or just the imagery in general, I feel like it's just one of those movies that's always been in my mind. It's just like a staple of cinema especially when it comes to the comedy action genre and anytime I think about Eddie Murphy this is definitely one of those earlier films in his career that pops into my mind I mean without a doubt we know Trading Places was before this this was probably the movie that started to make him Eddie Murphy you know what I mean at this point he had already kind of made a name for himself but this was the movie that was putting you know him on the map and it was after this that you start to see all the big roles start to come back to back to back and re-watching this I realized that I don't remember the sequel as much and I definitely want to revisit that soon but I am excited at some point to watch this movie again and the sequel and do like some full maybe double feature review over on my channel but yeah man going back and re-watching this it was definitely a good time thanks for telling me to go check it out again Eddie Murphy he's fantastic right like he gives a great performance in this film that is fun and energetic while also being really funny i really enjoy him in this movie now like any movie from this era there's gonna be jokes and moments and some moments of dialogue and some of just the, the way that the film feels the pacing that's gonna feel a little bit dated in this film definitely it you know definitely falls under that there are elements about this film that do feel a little bit dated but Eddie Murphy is great and I just love Eddie Murphy overall I know that you're more of a fan of you know a little bit earlier edgy a little more raunchy kind of you know r-rated Eddie Murphy which I totally understand I love that version of Eddie Murphy too and that you're not a huge fan of when he became a little bit more family friendly but since I grew up when Mulan was coming out and Dr. Doolittle or Shrek I've always thoroughly enjoyed Eddie Murphy as the family guy as well so I've just always loved the earlier stuff the older stuff the family friendly stuff the not so family friendly stuff there's some of his movies that I can't stand like Norbit which I haven't seen in many years so maybe my opinion will be changed but for the most part this is a super talented guy and it's just great to always go back and see actors when they were really young you know what I mean to kind of see that early kind of charisma and energy when they were coming to these some of these earlier projects Projects. and this movie definitely screams that when it comes to Eddie Murphy and just to kind of see where his career would go after this you know you could just see all the talent on display in this film alone so I'm just jumping straight into my thoughts here obviously because at this point I'm assuming that Rashad has already talked about the plot and all that jazz and what's going on but yeah you know I think that he plays a good cop in this film obviously he's a little bit over the top in the situations he gets himself into he would never be a cop in real life you know what I mean like they would never put up with a cop like this but it's just one of those action comedy films from that era that's just over the top and just fun to watch and just energetic and I just love seeing Eddie Murphy in this movie he is just entertaining really even if the movie is bad he's so entertaining and this movie being a great movie definitely makes it more fun I think what makes this film a little forgettable for me as far as some of the elements that some of the things that I didn't remember going back when you're watching it are a lot of the side characters there isn't really anybody when you're watching this movie that feels like they stand out nearly as much as Eddie Murphy he is easily the standout performance and of all the performances in this movie which you know he's on the cover he's Eddie Murphy he is the main character so you would hope that's the case but I think without a doubt like he steals the show and you know re-watching it I couldn't help but feel like some of the other actors and some of the other performances just didn't hold a candle compared to him but yeah man I love going back and re-watching this this was just like a nice fun watch to sit back and kind of have nostalgic memories of while also being able to kind of be reminded of certain elements of the movie but yeah man I'm going to give it back to you now a big thanks again for having me in this video if you guys are into movie reviews super cut videos or anything like that definitely go over to my channel I'm sure the link will be down below in the description box and comment your thoughts for Rashad and I do you agree with the two of us what is your opinion on this movie and I definitely can't wait to see what the comments are for this video and again thank you Rashad definitely definitely happy to check this movie out and I'm looking forward to continuing our tit for tat series my man you see how I do you let me tell you something I'll pick movies out for you that I know you that you most likely gonna dig you know what I'm saying? But my, my little devil conscience is telling me, pick some bullshit out that he's going to shit on. But then again, damn it, you, you, you're a hard case to crack, man, because I it's very hard to find something that you're going to shit on, man, because you, you see the good in everything. But that's a good quality to have, and I admire you for that. You know, I, I talk a lot of shit, I nitpick about a lot of things, and sometimes I annoy even myself. So kudos to you, man, for, for being that, that shining light. That sees the good in even some of the worst movies, like Cats, for example. This film is a perfect blend of comedy, of action. You know what I'm saying? Like, back then, either movies were really serious or really goofy. 
this really took the the action comedy and took it to the next level. And after that, there were like a lot of copycats, you know. This was almost like kind of the start of the buddy cop film. But nah, not so much really because 48 Hours did that. But 48 Hours is really serious, you know what I mean? But this was really... This really kind of kicked off the comedic buddy cop shit where even a movie like Lethal Weapon that was serious had to add more comedy in there because look, Hollywood show business is a business. Beverly Hills Cop made so much money, studios took note of this and said, listen, if we're going to do the buddy cop shit, it can't be super serious and dark. We got to make that shit funny because this movie made all this money. We got to do the same thing. So it kind of did the blueprint for the comedic buddy cop film because this is a buddy cop film believe it or not this is eddie's movie but he does team up with rosewood played by um oh what's his name judge reinhold and Taggett. you know so it is kind of a buddy cop film and by the end of the movie you really enjoyed their relationship you don't want it to end this is one of those movies also where i did not want it to end i could have watched this movie forever but they, they stopped it the patty labelle song came on the credits rolled and then three years later we get beverly hills cop 2 Oh my God, I hope Perez doesn't pick that for me because I did not care for Beverly Hills Cop 2. I mean, it did make a lot of money. It was popular. I was not a fan. I was such a fan of this one. I felt too, I think Eddie just did too much in part two. You know what I mean? And then by three, man, don't get me started on fucking three. A little backstory about when I first watched this. Yeah, this came out in 84 and my pop actually bought the VHS tape. Now, if you're around in the 80s or if you know about the 80s back then, Nobody owned any VHS tapes because back then to buy a VHS tape, you're going to spend about 50 to like $80, sometimes like over $100 to buy the tape. Everybody back then rented the movie. If they had, if you had two VCRs, if you were one of those, you were lucky you have two VCRs, you could just dub the movie, return the tape back, boom, you got it in your house now. But my pop actually bought the official VHS tape with the sleeve and everything. So you couldn't tell me shit. I said, wow, yes, first VHS tape owned was Beverly Hills Cop. And I watched that shit over and over and over again. And damn, I'm five years old watching this. And it's one of the first R-rated movies I've ever seen. And I remember going to school around, yeah, first grade, first or second grade. Because mind you, I grew up in the, the prior Eddie era. And I watched Beverly Hills Cop so much, all of a sudden I went to school. And I just the curse words just started coming out of me. Like somebody catching the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues. I was just like just cursing like a sailor. And the kids thought I was cool. But I was cursing just like Eddie Murphy. You know, I was like, man, fuck this and motherfuck that and bitch this and bitch that. And it was like, oh, Rashad curses. So for about a week, I was cool. But then everybody else started cursing. And the next thing you know, everybody forgot about me. You know, the fuck you gonna do? Wrapping this up, y'all. This is a classic film. This is the movie that really made Eddie a star. Is it Eddie's best movie? Nah, man. I mean, I have to really think about that one off the top of the dome. I really love Coming to America. I really love 48 Hours. Uh, Harlem Nights, I really love. I think Harlem Nights is very underrated and The Nutty Professor but and Boomerang. But you got to put Beverly Hills Cop up there is one of his best. So it's definitely one of his best. Is it the best? I, probably not. But I love this film. If it wasn't for this... Eddie probably was, would have still been a star because he's extremely talented. The man's funny. He can play serious roles. He can play different characters. You know, the skits that I do on my channel, you know, Eddie inspired that, man, to play different characters and do different voices and shit. Eddie really started that, man. So props to the man. So, yeah, I think he still would have been a big star if not for that movie. But it just would have probably took a little longer. But thank God he did because we got a classic movie out of it that spawned two mediocre sequels. And there's a rumor that he's going to do another one. I just hope he leaves it alone. So anyways, y'all, Beverly Hills Cop gets an A-plus in my book. Classic, one of the all-time greats. And Perez, thank you for joining me in this video once again, man. I love this Tit for Tat series that we're doing. But I'm not 100% in love with the next movie you picked out for me, which is Halloween Town 2. God damn. <laughs> so once again, y'all, I'm going to leave the link in the description to Anthony A. Perez's channel for our Halloween Town video. So make sure you subscribe to his channel. If you like and dig the content, subscribe to this channel as well. Did I say that right? If you like and dig the content on this channel, hit the like and subscribe. Notification bell in the corner. And uh, yeah, y'all, comment freely below what you thought about the movie. And that's it. This is Rashad G signing out. See you in the next video.